Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. We are coming to you from Laurel, Mississippi, which is kind of between Meridian and Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Today, we are here to visit the grave of a man that I loved watching on reruns when I was growing up. I loved Nick at Night, and they used to always show Green Acres crazy fish out of water story about a man who buries a Hungarian, successful lawyer in New York City, decides to move out to the country, and he meets a crazy cast of characters there, including Eb Dawson, played by Tom Lester. Days with Jordan the Lion and you all. It begins right now. Tom Lester's buried here in Laurel at the Hickory Grove Cemetery, which it has multiple entrances and each entrance is named something different. So be careful. We are at Hickory Grove and this is the town that he grew up in. So he's buried here and a lot of the experiences he had on his grandpa's farm or what he would use for his experiences as Ebb. This will definitely be a little tricky because there's no office here and there's no coordinates or anything. And of course, any photo that you find online is right up against the headstone so you can't see anything around it either to find it. So I'll show you where it's at when I find it. Okay, so I entered right down there. If you drive straight up here or if you enter from this sideway, you will pretty much find it right past the first intersection. Here is the family plot. His grandparents. And his parents. Who instilled the love of Christianity in him, which was a lifelong passion. And here he is, Tom Lester, Ebb of Green Acres. Whereas some people, when they have a character that they're so known for, like, we'll say Aunt B from the Andy Griffith Show, they resent the character because people don't see them as anything but the character. But he always said, I was Ebb, I was happy to be Ebb, and he would basically spend most of his life doing appearances, wearing the Ebb clothes, the Ebb hat and everything, a part that he ended up gaining when he was 25 years old. Kind of a nice thing to see. So he was raised out here in Laurel and like I said, his family was very religious. One day he asked his parents, what is the difference between loving God and loving Jesus? And they explained why it meant so much what Jesus did. And so he said as soon as he heard that, he wanted to be baptized. And so at the age of 10, he was baptized and said he was considered himself happy ever after. Said he always listened to what he thought God wanted for him. And so he said he briefly, because he was a good student, thought about becoming a doctor, but he didn't really want to be a doctor. But he was good with biology and chemistry, so he did graduate from the University of Mississippi with a degree in biology and chemistry and ended up becoming a teacher for a year. Became a chemistry teacher. And he said it just kept bugging him that he felt like from the time he was little watching movies, and he always liked clean stuff. He said, I like clean movies when movies meant something and it was, you know, good family values, things like that. He was all about morality. He said he always felt like his calling was Hollywood. So he would tell people that he wanted to go to Hollywood and they would say, you're crazy. You're too tall, you're too skinny, you're too ugly, you're too Southern, nobody's gonna want your voice. And if there's anything I learned, my time in Hollywood that the teachers would always say, the things that make you different are the things that end up getting you cast. And that was no difference for him. He said he 
literally just packed up everything he owned, threw it in his car and drove across country till he got to Hollywood. He said at first nothing was happening, but then he met an acting teacher through his church and she was really good and she said you have a lot of natural ability but you need to learn technique and so she started teaching him and he started doing plays well he started doing plays with linda paul henning's daughter and they became friends paul would come see the shows and then linda would have hangouts at their house so tom lester would be there eating hot dogs and drinking coca-colas and having fun and Finally, when Paul Henning was doing the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction and Green Acres, he would think of Tom Lester for all of those. Tom would end up guest star on Beverly Hillbillies, same as Eddie Albert. <laughs> then he would also be cast as Ebb, and he said it was down to 400 people they saw, and he just won the part. He said, I was Ebb. He said, I was maybe smarter than Ebb, and Ebb was naive, but... He saw a lot of himself in Ebb, and he said, I believed everything about that character, and so Ebb was so great. He was the farmhand around the Douglas farm. He was originally Mr. Haney's farmhand. When Mr. Haney sold the property, Ebb came with it, and Ebb didn't seem to have any parents, so he always used to call Mr. and Mrs. Douglas mom and dad, which was always great. <laughs> so, But he said in real life, even though he had parents, he, he kind of looked at Eddie Albert as like a surrogate father. Eddie gave him a lot of great advice and they were friends till Eddie died. And in fact, he said because of Eddie, he got into a lifelong habit of taking vitamins and antioxidants and taking care of his health. He said he would wake up every day in Los Angeles at 5 a.m. and go hit the gym for an hour and a half, lived modestly. He would come back and live part of his year here and then he had an apartment above someone's garage in the San Fernando Valley and he would continue to work. He would do Little House on the Prairie and uh, Knight Rider and all kinds of things, Benji, but nothing ever as meaty as Ebb. I think once you're a character that memorable, it's hard to kind of see him as anything else. But like I said, he was very devout, so he would also spend his time going out and preaching about how important it was that he was saved and talking about morality and he was a big proponent of having the Ten Commandments everywhere. He felt like the country was founded upon that so that was something that he found to be very important to him and his family owned a big farm out here like I want to say 350 acres and he had inherited that so he would spend a lot of his time out here really made him able to live the life that he wanted to and a lot of that like i said was going out and portraying ebb at autograph shows and anytime they were doing anything related to green acres he was happy to be there and in fact he was the last living member of green acres the man who played hank kimball alvy moore was who lester claimed was his best friend he said we were lifelong friends and even when he died, I was there. He said, we were working on a project together and I heard him breathe three times and then he just fell over dead. Very sad. Tom Lester would end up getting Parkinson's disease and battling that at the end of his life. He ended up passing away at the age of 81 years old and uh, was engaged to his caretaker from what I read. He was only married one time, but died in his caretaker's home in Nashville, Tennessee. Boy, was he missed. He always felt that it was important to stand up for what you believed in, and that bothered him that he felt like the country was changing so much. He felt like if you went to any other country and it was based off of a religious background that if you, you know you're a woman you couldn't uh, have your arms exposed your head exposed or whatever you would abide by that and so I guess he just felt that our country being founded upon um, Judeo-Christian beliefs and the founding fathers he felt like so many things were being altered just to suit the needs of the current 
life and not what the country was based on. So he was, he said if, you know, people would say, oh, maybe you gotta get into politics and he just felt like he would be looked at as a total radical, but he said it was important to stand up for things that you believed in and felt strongly about. And in the end, he was absolutely right about one thing. He always felt that it was his calling to go to Hollywood and it was. Can't imagine anybody else playing Ebb. Can't imagine all those crazy things he would do like eating the spaghetti right out of the box when it wasn't cooked and thanking Mrs. Douglas for a great lunch after he'd do it. I mean, it was just, the guy was absolutely hilarious. The whole show was, it was, you know, one sane guy, this one fish out of water living amongst a world of crazy people, including his wife. And boy, it was Tom Lester great. And a great ambassador for the show. Rest in peace, Tom. Kind of surprised that him passing in 2020, they would still have this temporary marker out here. Thomas William Lester, it says. One thing I was kind of surprised to find out was that in 1997, he was the recipient and award winner of the Wildlife Farmer of the Year for Mississippi that year. Congratulations, Tom. Tom Lester pretty much looked exactly the same all the way through his life. I mean, as he aged, he looked a little bit older, but he always looked like the 25 year old Eb that we would know, probably because he stayed in such good shape. But he also looked like Pete Maravich, Pistol Pete Maravich. So when they made a movie about Pistol Pete, he played the older version of Pete Maravich as well. Thank you all for watching. We're gonna call it a day from Laurel, Mississippi. Rest in peace, Eb. We will miss you, and the show lives on. Green Acres is the place to be. Goodbye.